Hi, let's take a look at an example involving digital photography. Because if you have something like an SLR camera where either you can manually do things like adjust focus or with most digital SLRs it can handle everything for you, what it's really doing is using a combination of lenses that behave as if they are a single lens trying to project a real image onto some way of capturing that image. So it used to be film that would react to the light that was shining on it to expose the film, and then you would have to develop the image from the light that sort of caused chemical reactions on that film. Now we tend to use CCDs, what we call charged couple devices, that are digital light sensors where we have a whole array of light sensors where each point has a light sensor sensitive to green, red, blue, light, and overall light intensity. And then that array of detectors will write out a number between typically 0 and 255 um, over all of those points on that array can go to higher numbers conceivably, but going from 0 to 255 covers a pretty good representation for what our eye can see. And then that file of millions of numbers in an array that breaks down to whatever size grid your CCD has, that's what the digital picture is. And that's essentially what a JPEG is. A JPEG is just a giant table or, well, I guess you could call it a multi-dimensional table where it's like every cell in that table has four numbers written in it separated by a comma. So let's talk about how to actually make it from the optical side of it rather than the electronic side of it. So all of those lenses sort of combined together behave as if they have an effective focal length. And by carefully adjusting the location of that lens, you can adjust the image distance so that you create a focused image on the CCD. Now typically what will happen is if something is infinitely far away, those lenses are designed so that they can form a focused image that is right around the focal point of that lens and then adjust outward from there in order to focus on closer and closer objects. Now, taking a picture of things really close up is an incredibly difficult challenge. And macro lenses are developed to try to handle some of the just necessary optics that are needed for doing that. So we're just gonna take a look at distance photography and what we typically see with nature photographers or sports photographers that use what are called telephoto lenses. And this is an example of a telephoto lens. And it's also what you see with things like people who are observing other people from afar. So by adjusting the barrel on this lens, you can change the focal length of this lens and then by fine tuning it, you can adjust the position of that lens in order to end up getting a focused image. So let's say that the telephoto lens that we're using has a focal length of 120 millimeters and we want to take a focused picture of an object that happens to be 15 meters away. What's going to be the image distance to get a focused image? So from our image equation, 1 over Q is going to be 1 over F minus 1 over P. Our focal length here, we're creating real images. That's the only way we can capture something with a camera. So we're going to have positive focal distances. And inverting that equation, solving for the image distance, Q is our focal length times our object distance divided by our object distance minus the focal length. 
So 120 millimeters is 0 0.120 meters times 15 meters divided by 15 meters minus 0 0.120 meters, which is really close to 15 over 15, so it's not going to be a huge difference from our focal length. So when I take 15 divided by 14.88 meters, multiply it by 0.120 meters, I get 0.121 meters 121 millimeters. So it doesn't have to move much to take something that instead of infinitely far away is 15 meters, which is about 50 feet away. Now the closer it gets, the farther away that lens would have to move to form a focused image. And if it gets too close, you're not going to be able to do it. Now something else that you tend to notice, particularly with sports cameras, those lenses designed to take photos of things that are far away also tend to have huge diameters. And the reason for that is if there's low light, if you need to capture an image at incredibly high speed, then you need a lot of area of your lens in order to create a focused image fast. Now, if it's really bright out, and you're taking pictures of something that's still, you don't need much active area of lens at all in order to get a focused picture, and it's actually really easy to overexpose an image. So most lenses can change the active area of the lens. Your eyes do it too with your iris. So your iris expands and contracts, changing the size of your pupil, which is kind of weird because the pupil isn't anything, it's a hole, it's nothing. It's just a hole, and then as that iris expands, it exposes more of the crystalline lens in your eye so that if it's really dark out, your pupils get really large, letting in more light, so hopefully the light sensors in the back of your eye can detect what's going on. If it's really bright out, those pupils constrict till they get pretty tiny so that you don't overexpose and hurt the retinas in the back of your eye. It's also why when you take pictures you get red eye because that flash right as you take the picture is letting in so much light to the back of your retina that some of that light is able to reflect off the back of your retina and since the pupil's a hole you're just seeing inside your eye. You just see that redness that you would see if you just looked inside someone's eye all day every day. So, most digital cameras or most mechanical cameras, when they have a varying iris, if they have mechanical stops to set the opening, they usually are in a pattern of the square root of two. And the reason for that is the active area goes like the diameter squared. So, what those numbers are are called F numbers. And the F number is defined to be the focal length of the lens divided by the active diameter of the lens. So the smallest number is the largest active area that you get. The diameter is going to be the focal length divided by that F number. So typically, you'd see something that tends to be somewhere around 1, and then the next number will usually be 2, 2.8, 4, 5.6, 8, 11, 16, 22. At some point, there's a minimum opening size that you can get on most irises. So it's going to end there at that minimum size. So if we have 120 millimeter focal length and the smallest F number we have on that camera is 1.4, that means the active diameter of that lens is going to be 120 millimeters divided by 1.4, so that would be 86 millimeters, which would be something kind of about this big, which is what you tend to see with high resolution nature photography or high speed sports photography. So every time you see the cameraman get tackled, just think that that is thirty to forty thousand dollars plus of camera insurance going out to that photographer to get that very expensive lens replaced.
Thanks for watching.